It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott's here, Mary Jo Foley. We're going to talk about Microsoft. Mary Jo was at a research event uh, last week. What's hot and new for Microsoft? Also, some suggestions for how Microsoft could turn things around. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 303, recorded March 14th, 2013. MacGyver Madlock. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Rackspace, the open cloud company. At Rackspace, build what you want, where you want, and how you want. All backed by their world-renowned fanatical support. Try it today. Download the open cloud at rackspace.com slash open. And by ShareFile. Enhance your workflow. Send files of almost any size easily and securely with ShareFile from Citrix. Try ShareFile today for a 30-day free trial. Visit sharefile.com. Click the radio microphone and enter Windows. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, and now an online store. Check out their new commerce solution so you can start selling stuff immediately. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code WINDOWS3. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we talk about everything coming out of Redmond, Washington. And you know who just came out of Redmond, Washington? Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com. And what did you do? Did you tag Paul as he went in? Yep, <laughs> yes, I like, did. It's like a cage <laughs> match. Yep. Paul Therott's there now. Hey, Paul. She softened them up. <laughs> this is uh, Paul is, of course, the uh, editor-in-chief of the super site for Windows, windsupersite.com. Mary Jo blogs at allaboutmicrosoft.com for ZDNet. And is, are you, were you there on the same purpose, but just at different times? Nope. Totally different field trips. <laughs> Our purposes are at odds. Oh. Oh, well, interesting. Well, I, I am not allowed to pry, right? No, I think we can talk about it now, can't we? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, last week I was there to go to the Microsoft Tech Fest, which is their uh, research science fair kind of show. Oh, fun. And... Yeah, I thought it was going to be more fun than it was. I was a little disappointed um, because it, there were only certain exhibits open to the public. And when they brought you around, they really had you on lockdown. Like I had a PR person on one side and a Microsoft research person on the other side. And I could never get anywhere without either of them coming with me, Ugh. including the bathroom. It's like, it's, <laughs> what? No. That's like the Soviet so Union. Sort of kidding there, not really. That's like, <laughs> did they have somebody sitting outside your door at the hotel and at the end of the hall, too? Holy <laughs> cow, did they bug your room? <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I what? know. I'm it, not, it, you know, and it's fun because I love the research stuff. I really love those projects. And I, I got to talk to some of the researchers, which was fun. But I just felt a little too tied down and constrained. Wow. Yeah. Was it because it was because you were on you were on the research campus? No, we weren't even. We were, um, <laughs> I wish that no, was it. it. Were you in a sanitized <laughs> facility? Oh, man. Yeah, we were like, in, we were in the executive conference center, um, which is the generic conference center they use for everything. Like they use that for build and a lot of other um, meetings when people come to campus. So I don't, I don't really know what they thought we were going to find or where we were going to run off to. I'm not exactly sure what that was all about. Do not talk to the scientists. Great. Great. I'm a hologram. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not speak to the scientists. So, Paul, you're not there for that. No. No, I, I'm, I'm interested to hear Mary Jo's opinion of that show because it, it corresponds with what I thought this past week. I, I was looking at the bloggers who went there and were writing about it, and <clears throat> I think you feel a certain obligation to write about stuff when you go there, but it's, you know, as you would for any show, and it's it just didn't seem... You know, it seemed like as she described, I guess, from the outside. I guess that's yeah. the uh, that's an interesting point is that you can't really go to something like that and not write about it, even if there's nothing yeah. to say. Right. Yeah. It, 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 right. And it's the tough thing. So <laughs> it kind of put you in an awkward position. You're like, oh, they got this uh, project of some sort and um, it's not ever going to really be a project or a, a product. It's like being at, you know, AT&T in the 1970s or Bell Labs or whatever. Will you ever talk into your shoe phone? You will. <laughs> 
Yes, you will. Yes, you will. So what was the coolest thing you saw, Mary Jo? So, uh, yeah, there was one really cool thing I saw, which was separate from TechFest. They let me go oh, the next day to this uh, thing called the Envisioning Center that used to be the Microsoft home of the future. And mm -hmm. they also used to have like a Microsoft office of the future. And they've combined them together into one demo center now. So you go around and it's like a day in the life of somebody using technologies that they think are like three to 10 years away Ooh, from being right. commercialized. That, that, so that cool. was cool. So this that is what our cool. life will be like in the 2023. Yeah. What was it all like? Android devices? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. you are cold. No, you know, you know what it was all? This was kind of freaky, actually. It was all those giant perceptive pixel displays everywhere, like yeah. in your kitchen, it, becoming your desktop, um, on walls in your office. And it was really interesting because everybody is always talking about the future being small screens. But Microsoft sees the future also as being these gigantic, big ass, multi-touch displays. <laughs> What tell, the perceptive pixel is something Microsoft just recently bought, right? They did. Yep. And they're yep. touch they're giant touch screens. Yeah. Yep. They're yeah, and, and right now they're like between fifty five and eighty two inches, I think, and, and those are the typical sizes they come in. And they used to sell for eighty thousand dollars a piece. They they're not like for the everyday person, but they envision the price really coming down on these. You know, and I don't that, really want this in my living room. I'm sorry. You know, it's cooler It's cooler in person than it looks when you see, like, that picture. Yeah, yeah imagine playing a game like, uh, which I've done, um, Cut Fruit the Rope. Ninja. You yeah, know, Fruit Ninja, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, the, on, a, yeah. on a screen like that. It's fun. Yeah, for, yeah, so, yeah, okay. For 10 minutes, yeah. 10 so minutes. I, obviously it makes more sense in a office environment. You could picture it being used as a virtual whiteboard type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that makes perfect sense when you think about what Microsoft does best. So. so is this what Bill Gates was using when he did his IAMA at uh, Reddit? Yeah. 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 He said, I'm on an 80-inch display. It must have been this. Frequently misquoted as a computer or tablet when, in fact, it's just a screen. It's just a screen. But is there a computer on the other end? There has to be, yeah. It's connected to it. <laughs> and by the way, it's not one of those cute little tablet convertible hybrid things. It's a giant tower computer. <laughs> See, I don't know if this looks like me in 2023. Of course, I, I would be in a wheelchair. But I like the pen use, though. Yeah. The, be the best part about it, see, what they're not showing you there is this guy's got the pen. He's touching it. If he were to bring up the virtual keyboard, which he would have to because there's no keyboard attached, it would be smaller than his hand on that display because the resolution is so high. The little display, it's really, it's really funny. If you, if you picture like a postage stamp coming up at the bottom, that's what the keyboard looks like. You can obviously resize it, but the default... <laughs> view of it is like this teeny teeny thing because that's how it scales i think that's a great idea so you look really humiliated bending over <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> to where's the shift key oh my god <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, the the other cool thing that was part of this home of the future, besides these giant displays, was they they showed like where they see their version of Siri going in in like three to 10 years. And it's it's kind of more like a combination of Siri plus Google now. Right. It's like you say you say to your okay, big the, table. The problem here is in three to 10 years. That's, that's know, kind of the problem. But like, it'll be like you say my to your natural big desire table, to make fun of this is hard too. No, come on, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Come on. Will you like, ever talk cool. to your computer? Someday you <laughs> will. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, I, I it, would. It's the guy like walking around with a giant tower computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, saying, you Billy, to go Billy tell me how to get to the store. Will you ever Billy? be able to touch your yeah. own computer screens? He'll someday. be wheeling on one of those two wheeler things. You will. <laughs> No, with like, a battery say, backpack. Okay. No, oh, come on, come on. No, really. Like, sorry, say you sorry. say you could go up to your wall and say. This is why they didn't um, invite me and Paul, by the way. <laughs> go up to your wall and say, you know what? Show show us all those design plans we just did last week. Okay, now let's let's get the ones from Bob, and they come up on your screen. Like that's the thing they're showing. You know, like your voice your voice is uh, tied in with natural language query capabilities and on the back end, all the big data stuff. So you're being able to parse queries and refine queries with your voice. So it, it was cool. It, it was pretty cool. It, does, it doesn't sound that different Every, from what you'd be able to do with a connect and an Xbox 720 or even a 360. Maybe. You can't say uh, a whole lot to the Xbox. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's like when you're, uh, you know, when I'm in the car, sometimes I'll hit the wrong button on the steering wheel and it will start loudly asking me to make a phone call or whatever. And I right. hate that. And most of my voice interactions with anything electronic are exasperated. Like, please go away. You know, cancel. <laughs> oh, so and increasingly pleading for it to stop, you know. 
Um, there was anyway, a, fa a famous tech TV moment uh, during the Fresh Gear show where we reviewed stuff where Jim Ladderback is talking to a lamp. <laughs> and he, and he, Not hard to imagine. Like 15 times, he goes, "Fresh gear lamp on, fresh gear lamp on." It was. It's just. It hasn't gotten much better, to be honest. I think and of he the. Took his giant backpack and he stomped out bam. of there. I think of. Uh, I think of uh, the TV show episodes where um, uh, Matt LeBlanc is in his car and he presses the thing and says, "Call Bob, calling your mom." No, no, cancel, cancel. Hello. Oh, hi, Mom. Just calling to say hi. <laughs> well, that's like the joke on the league where the guy is getting frustrated with his phone, always, you know, hanging up on him and not, you know, disconnecting him from his wife. And he says, you know what app this phone needs? It needs an app called phone. <laughs> you know? It's like the one thing it doesn't do right. Let me just, let me just dial. Yeah. <sighs> well, now, okay. We've... Mary Jo, we're we're boys. We're boys. <laughs> we've we done. ridiculed how you spent your week. <laughs> we're done making fun of this all. Uh, how how is Microsoft's track record on this? Because they've done this for years, um, where they've you know had videos about the kitchen of the future and stuff like that. Are they pretty accurate? Uh, they're usually either a little too ambitious or a little too underambitious. Right. Yep. Well, right. <laughs> like well, they show you stuff that you're like, okay, like, I mean, how long have we been seeing videos where you could take your phone and put it down on a table and it would recognize you and populate your phone with all kinds of things, right? right, right. Still isn't here, but I think I saw that video maybe 10 years ago. Right. I, they, um, they are very much like those, uh, you know, California research firms from 1970s that just couldn't productize things properly. Xerox you know, Park. And, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Microsoft is a company that, you know, came out with the tablet PC. And then Apple did it better. Right. You know, they came out with the smartwatch, and now yeah. Apple reportedly is going to come out with smartwatches. You know, this uh, notion that Mary Jo is just talking about, where you put a device on a table, it lights up, it, it understands it's you, and it does things that are specific to you, is something they've been demoing in that house of the future for many years. Yeah. Yeah. And don't be surprised if Samsung or Apple or some other company does it right. And and by right, I sort of mean Microsoft technically will do it right. They'll work with standards bodies and they'll, you know, like the DLNA type stuff. But, you know, someone's just going to do it. And this yeah. is the, I think, the fundamental problem for Microsoft these days. Uh, they have a hard time uh, pushing from vision to popular well, product. Well, and I, I would say on the one hand, it's very difficult to predict the future. I mean, nobody does a good job of that. Remember the Apple... Um, uh, the Knowledge Navigator. Knowledge Navigator uh, video, yeah. which in some ways came true, but some ways was light years ahead. And this is very typical. Some of it's exactly right. Some of it's exactly sure. wrong. Uh, yeah, you could go back to Asimov and uh, sure. Arthur C. Clarke. But here's the difference. He's, these, were, these were speculative. This was speculative fiction. You're at sure. the Microsoft Research Center. Where well, presumably they're doing more than just <laughs> <laughs> you know? making up stuff. <laughs> this is stuff they presumably are working on or no. Yeah, they are. And, and this... No, and this is also where they want people who come in who are customers and partners and press and other invited guests to say, yeah, that looks really cool. That makes sense. Or I would never use that, right? So it's kind of also a feedback mechanism sure. too. It's not just here's where we think the future is going and we don't care what you think. It's more they're helping them to refine kind of where they're taking yeah. things. Yeah. This is sort of a weird segue, but I, I wonder sometimes whether the age of Microsoft pushing hard to get those research projects into products has in some ways slowed down. It seemed like there was a period there in the early 2000s, especially where they did a lot of this stuff. You know, um, ClearType was something that had come out of Microsoft Research. and was it considered a very big deal at the time, you know, sub-pixel re rendering, and they pushed it into their Microsoft Reader product, which, you know, imploded very quickly, and obviously into Windows itself as well. Um, you know, they did smart screen, or I'm sorry, uh, the smart displays, the, the spot watch, you know, the tablet PC and um, media center sort of uh, software, all that stuff must have come out of various research projects. And, and I'm sure there are modern examples of these same things, but it seems like they're less, less so, you know, like it's, uh, it, it seems like it's slowed down. Well, they acquired it, Connect, right? That wasn't... For, no, it, they built they built the Connect. They built that from scratch? Oh, I thought it was yeah. an Israeli company that they oh, met I, I think a, it incorporates some of their technology right. too. But um, yeah, I, th I actually think, Paul, almost the opposite of you. Like I, I okay. think what's happening, what I see happening now is way more pressure inside Microsoft for research projects to be commoditized. And a lot of times, though, they're not exactly the projects they have in Microsoft Research, but they're 
uh, like pieces of something that then gets incorporated into a shipping product. And, and that's one of the things this whole Tech Fest research fair is about. So day one is just for the public and the press and all. But the other days in the week are for Microsoft Teams to come in and see the research and say, hey, I like that. I w I'd love uh, to use that. We could use that in Office. We could product. use that in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. did so they ever do a rundown of some of the ways that their research has been productized? Is there a. Yeah. It seems they, like this is something they'd want to publicize. They have, they've done it in blog posts occasionally. Um, like when Windows 8 came out, they had a blog post saying, here's some of the research projects that were part of Windows 8 that you might not know we started in Microsoft Research. So they do that occasionally. But yeah, they could do it more. They could, they could sell that message way more, for sure. It seems like they're one of the few high-tech companies doing billions and billions of dollars of R&D every year. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know, and that they oh, would yeah. want there to be a direct correlation between that spending and some form of productization slash revenue. I think when you get that big, though, you're, you can have a billion dollar R&D budget and not always expect I, it. To I, you can, but, you know, when a decade goes by and uh, several competitors are running roughshod over you, I mean, at some point you need to start showing results, too. Yeah. Yeah. Microsoft's huge R&D budget. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to see if I can... Cloud. It's, yeah. it's in it's the billions. Nine billion. I mean, it's Isn't it yeah. nine billion? Nine billion. Wow. Yeah. It's a, it's uh, like and 90 percent of it, at least according to uh, uh, Forbes, is cloud focused. So not Today, something yeah. you could really show off. Yeah. Uh, 8.7 billion, uh, which is 13.9 percent of their revenue. Uh, this was a year, two years ago, though, so it might be, it might be more or less uh, now. But that's a significant percentage. I, I, I'm sure it's way more than. I mean, Apple Apple's R and D budget is going to be comparatively tiny, certainly as a percentage. Right. And then Google, I'm not sure. Google has enough kind of computer sciencey math, you know, theoretical science type stuff going on that I could I could sort of imagine their R and D budget being pretty high too. But those might be the only two companies that spend this kind of cash. Yeah, well, I yeah. can actually. Well, I can go back to the 2011 article that I found and tell you who spent what. Well, I, yeah, I bet IBM spends a lot, right? Oracle was number their, two in, in this yeah. uh, in this. Scenario. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah, what, I don't know. They're researching sandwiches okay. for Larry Ellison's boat. I don't. Yeah, know I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Microsoft's looking good by comparison. So. Um, Microsoft spends eight times as much on R and D. Again, this is all though a couple of years mm -hmm. ago, so I don't. Okay, I don't but no. Uh, this is the chart from uh, Business Insider from a few years ago. Eight times as much as uh, what? Apple. Apple, yeah, yeah. I'm not. That doesn't surprise me. I know that Apple is is run very lean. I mean, look at Apple compared to Dell is fascinating because Dell is a company that basically just, uh, you know, they make things that other people make, right? There's no y single unique product at Dell. So why are they doing uh, any R and D? <laughs> I know. Well, okay, that's a good question. <laughs> let let Microsoft do the work. Yeah, Microsoft. You, you would think that HP and and IBM would be more similar to each other. Yeah. Yeah, Cisco's yeah. up there, Google, of course, uh, but Microsoft, as percentage of revenue uh, yep. and raw number, spends and more than true. Google yep. actually spends. I knew Microsoft would be number one, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. That's fascinating, actually. Google's a little maybe lower than I would have thought. Yeah, I, you would think that Google, of all people, uh, would be the ones doing the most research, more than even uh, Apple. The, the Apple thing is obviously the most interesting because Apple was literally run by the seat of its pants. <laughs> You know that it was like it's like the difference between uh, going based on a single person's opinion and emotions versus eight point six billion dollars in research. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's really kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah, it is amazing. Yeah, what was the worst thing you saw? <laughs> <laughs> the, it must have been something you saw that you thought, oh, no. Nice. But I was like, uh, I don't, um, I don't want to hurt any scientists' feelings, but no, no. no I, I actually liked pretty much everything I saw. That I, new, I, uh, that new dry water is going to be really great. I <laughs> yes. Just add water. Well, I, yeah, add water. <laughs> Typical yeah. Microsoft yeah. product. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I forgot the spot watch when you when you said that, Paul. I thought, you know, that's right. Micro before there was an eye watch or an imaginary eye watch. I'm, I'm forgetting at least half a dozen things. I mean, that's the problem. There was a period of time there where they kind of came up with all these things that kind of came, went, and fizzled. You know, and we forget about them um, until you know next year, Samsung or Apple or someone will release a watch and a, you know a smart display and a, you know all this stuff. I mean, right. It's it's interesting. Somebody in the chat we tried a bunch of stuff. Pointed out, and this is a good point that uh, it was Jeff in London said, 
if you count the 20% uh, stuff at Google, that might be not monetarily, but in terms of time spent on R&D. A larger yeah, amount. and that's obviously a unique Google thing that all employees, you know, for those who don't know, all employees are expected to spend twenty percent of their time, one day a week, working on an outside project of their own. Right, and and many things like Gmail came out of twenty percent products. Right, right, projects. I mean, beyond search, it's pro it's arguable that almost all of their other products came out of that. Right, you know, right. I bet. Google oh yeah, Plus, Maps it, Plus, Wave, everything. Yep. Yeah. Uh, including those like rainbow colored segways out in the lobby those were so uh i don't know i'm sorry i uh, i thought if i'm slamming microsoft i should have spread spread some equal, like i like spreading love is good spreading some equal love to, around the tech industry well it really is i think uh and i don't think i'm alone on this i think we are in a a, a, a kind of a stagnant time in the tech industry where we, we are looking for innovation and not seeing it. And most of the innovation you see at a place like CES is dopey or uh, incremental. Well, there's uh, nowhere to go. There's no, right? it, uh, But I know that we haven't invented everything that needs to be invented. But that's not really the point. It's like, it's like we're in the age right after the Renaissance, you know. All yeah. the great paintings have been made, you know, so we yeah. can make little copies of them. Yeah, but, we kind of are. Um, Do you think that's you know, it? The, or is it just a temporary? No, role? no, there'll always be more. But, but how um, soon? It's... It's tougher because, you know, the Apple stuff that has been a big deal over the past several years was based around this notion of new device, new device, new device. And, of course, they've kind of um, uh, saturated the market. And so we see evolution, evolution, evolution instead. And, you know, you can anticipate things like TVs and watches and stuff, but none of that stuff's very exciting. And it's going to be more along the lines of cloud computing services and integration. And I think we're just in a period of... Of evolution. I mean, I think it's just natural um, that that's the way it goes. All right. Uh, let's. I tell you what. Before we get to the everybody wants to fix Microsoft portion of the show, <laughs> <laughs> which as a, as a, as you know, I, I look. The show is going to gonna devolve into a self help show. <laughs> <laughs> Except self will be helping. Will be Microsoft. I think St Steve Ballmer should visit Doctor Oz. I do. I really do. The show today brought to you by Rackspace.com. I'm really, uh, I've been trying to get Rackspace to advertise on Twitter for a long time because I'm a big fan. You know, Scoble works. I don't know many friends that works there. Uh, Todd Clinton, who was here last week. Um, it is a really great company, renowned for its, what they call, fanatical support. I mean, these guys really care about what they're doing. And everybody I've met who works at Rackspace just not only loves their job, loves their customers, and really loves to do it right. It's probably why they teamed with NASA uh, a couple of, not so long ago, to create OpenStack. Rackspace co-founded OpenStack, the open cloud company. And they run the world's largest open cloud. That means you're not, it's kind of funny that NASA worked on this with them. <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe it's like a cloud around Mars or something. I don't know. It's just, it, you're not locked, what open cloud, OpenStack means you're not locked into a single provider. You have the freedom Okay, now, it's interesting about Windows Weekly because they say that there are some cloud solutions that use proprietary technology, but I, I'm trying to think who, they're, who they might be thinking of there, uh, which could make it expensive and complicated to move your data if you ever want to leave. With OpenStack, you're not locked into a single provider. You can move those apps, the code, the websites, between multiple OpenStack-based clouds, public or private, on-premise or hosted. Build what you want, where you want, how you want it. All backed by Rackspace World Renowned Fanatical Support. You can try it. You can download it for free. This is, I think, the first. No, we now have two advertisers that don't charge for their products. Absolutely free. Rackspace.com slash open. Rackspace.com slash open. Download, spin up, break out. Try it today. Download the open cloud at Rackspace. Rackspace.com slash open. We thank them so much for their support of Windows Weekly. Paul and Mary Jo notably silent during that commercial. <laughs> <laughs> we have nothing to say. We are thinking all about the cloud. The cloud. The puffy little cloud to around. The cloud. By the way, this was, uh, I think it was on this day that the great astronomer uh, Herschel discovered Uranus. Just a little astronomical fact. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> William, Sir William uh, Herschel. Um... Uh, 
So moving along, everybody wants to fix Microsoft. <laughs> Sorry. I really, really want to fix Microsoft. Yes, it says I that right here. I feel very strongly here. about this. So uh, we talk about this periodically. I can remember going back many years talking with Dvorak saying, I got to split it into three companies. And what yep. the three companies are changes all the time. You know, operating systems, enterprise, consumer. That's one. Uh, sure. What, what do you think? What do you like? Oh, you're not talking no. about splitting it up, actually. You want to no, fix we individual are. products. No, yeah, that, well, first, that, first we're yeah, trying to do the small there. fixes. Right? Let's fix and the then, products. Okay. So <laughs> and then I, if we can't. I will grant can. you now, having used Windows 8, and by the way, I love this Acer S7. It's a beautiful bit of hardware. I'm really yeah. a fan. Uh, Windows 8, uh, you know, if I used it as like a Windows 7, of course, it's better than Windows 7. I do agree with you on that. But there are some issues. Yeah. Uh, and I think you nailed it last week. Paul, when you said it's two operating systems, kind of yeah, Frankenstein stitched Frankenstein together in some together. natural fashion that is an affront to God and man. I think is how I said it. Yeah. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, it's uh, no, you know, it, this is one of those things where the strategy makes sense because it's the only way it can be successful. I.e., that if Microsoft had created Metro as a standalone system, you know, maybe called Surface OS or something, uh, that it would have failed in the marketplace, just like all of their other non-Windows initiatives have basically failed. And that by putting it in Windows, they're guaranteeing uh, several hundred million copies will be sold a year. And kicking and screaming or not, you know, people will eventually get used to it and hopefully will like it, obviously. And uh, they'll move along and maybe they'll get those hybrid systems like the one you're using. Yeah. The, yeah. The problem is if you use a regular computer like Mary Jo uses or like I use, uh, Windows 8 is not necessarily optimal. And... You know, I've been using Windows 8 full-time since uh, late 2011, and it's um, it's I'm, fine. I like it a lot. I, I actually love the touch. In fact, it it's to the point now where I don't want to use a non-touch computer well, for that's, the show. that's the issue. So, in other words, we're, we're in this transitionary period. Right. So, there right. are 1.3 so, billion Windows users in the world, and right. none of them are using touch machines. Right. That's a real so problem. So, yeah. we still have to address that market. And uh, I think that's the, that's the problem. And when people come to me and they complain about Windows 8... It's almost always that crowd. I don't really hear from people who buy a tablet and say, right. this OS doesn't make any sense. I think those people are pretty happy with it for the most part. Well, they probably rarely go to the desktop, right? Hopefully not. Yeah, because that experience is also terrible. But yeah, See, it's uh, funny because on the, des the desktop's great on a computer. Yes, yes. Uh, but as soon as you go touch only, the touch targets yeah. are too small, and a lot of the things we're using on the desktop, it just doesn't – it's frustrating because you can't quite – Yeah. <laughs> you're t tapping it, and it, it, you miss. When I go through this uh, – I have this kind of a, you know, a system where I, it's like you deal with it, you deal with it, you deal with it, it gets bad, and then you, I complain, and then I deal with it, and I deal with it, and then I complain, you know, and, and you can go back over time and – uh, you know, I, I would have posted things over the past couple of years where it's like, you know, why doesn't Windows 8 look like this? Why doesn't it work like this? Why can't we have this? And, you know, there's always reasons and explanations well, and all that kind of stuff. This is why we can't have good things. Nice things. <laughs> right. Windows 8. This is why we get ants, Leo. <laughs> but you know, you know what's this? That's something you this? say a lot of in your house. <laughs> this is why we get ants. You left yep. the pizza crust on the coffee table. <laughs> Yeah, I'm used to that. Go ahead, Mary, Mary Jo. Do you, guys, do you guys remember this? Like, as as Windows 8 was being developed, and every week on the show we talk about it, I said every, almost every week, like, yeah, I'm just not going to, I don't think this is going to work on non-touch tablets. Remember, I said this, like, you every week. You oh, yeah. called it. Yeah. Every week. Yeah. You and, called and, it. And now it's like everybody else is like, hey, guess what? This isn't really that good on non-touch tablets. <laughs> wow. I, I have a question. Wow. Though. Really? Why didn't you warn us about this a long time ago? <laughs> hey, Mary Jo, point the mic a little bit more towards you because it's aiming over a crowd. you got to talk there down the, the barrel of it. There talk down the barrel. See what I'm doing here? Look how I'm talking. <laughs> talking right into the microphone I like that. It. See, when you do that, it sounds... I just keep sliding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how many times have I heard that? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's good now. It's good now. Thank That's you. good? Good. Yeah. Good. Um, good. Sorry. But, uh, but, you know, I, like I just went into Staples, uh, the big Staples that's closest to where I live this week, and I saw all... They have a huge display right now of Windows 8 machines. Like, huge. Oh, good. Finally. Finally. You yeah. walk in Best the door and you're the same like, thing, yeah. <laughs> but you go try to use these machines that are on display, and only one out of about 12 or 13 that I saw was a touch machine. Really? Oh, Still? Yeah. I was wow. surprised. I thought I just went up and started touching them. I'm like, none of these are touch machines. I wonder if it's because Staples is an office supply store, and the feeling is that offices, you know, businesses will want regular PCs. But this is a this is the problem right now. You know, I, I, I think that these digitizers and the hardware that you need for a touchscreen are still 
sort of expensive within the confines of, you know, PCs being a very uh, commoditized business where it's hard to make a profit and so forth. And I think this is the thing we have to get over this year. But, man, a year is a long time. And a lot of perception occurs in that year uh, about Windows 8 being a dog. And a lot of it is going to occur because people are going to go in and see what you just saw, you know, that they don't have these touch systems. And that's too bad. It took a lot <laughs> less to make people hate Windows Vista. And you, you won't <laughs> find true. anybody who yeah. will defend Windows Vista, even though, truthfully, it wasn't that bad. Right. Paul was yeah. the only guy who liked it. <laughs> I know, but it really wasn't as. I mean, this is it wasn't much. As bad this as is much bad. more of a, a disconnect, I think. Yep. Yeah. And I would agree with you. So when I use it on touch, it's great. Except that. Yeah. It is literally great for the thing that it's designed for. So t yeah. touch, Metro works great. Yeah. Desktop not so much. A yeah. uh, regular computer without touch, desktop works great. Metro, yeah, you know, not so much. Dirac in our uh, chat room says, "Do you think the leap motion will change things?" That's that little. Thing you put in front of your trackpad and you kind of yeah gesture. no <laughs> nope i think that's not gonna i think that's we're gonna attack on every possible way that you can interact with a computer <laughs> and none of it's gonna make a difference yeah. <laughs> i still run into the problem where i'm typing and i'll swipe the stupid trackpad and for, even though i've disabled it it starts doing gestures and i'm in a different app or you know the the app switcher ui comes up or whatever and that kind of stuff is just those things kind of pile up you know it, it makes the whole experience a little frustrating Okay, that's so why, that's that's why we wanted to talk about modern mix, right? Okay, <laughs> yeah. So we're we're getting around to the fix. Product. Yeah, let's get to the know, fix. Right? We're not just complaining this time, Leo. No, we're not. <laughs> no, we it have was solutions. actually an interesting product that Stardock brought out. So Stardock uh, does a lot of different things. They do windows, window blinds. They do a lot of games, and they did Start Eight, which was the start button right. for Windows Eight, which was very controversial. But this yeah. this week they introduced something they call Modern Mix, which actually lets you have Windows come back to Windows. What? Yeah. So I shouldn't do it on my touch tablet. No, I, I would say that this product should only be used on traditional non-touch PCs. Okay. Yeah. And big screen, preferably, right? Like it yep. works the best on larger screens. And well, and yep. there is that issue of if you have a 27-inch screen, should you really be touching it? I guess the Pixel Perfect would say yes. Well, that's not really the point. It's more like you have a 27-inch screen, you probably aren't touching it because it's not because a touch it's too screen. Far so away. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, those Metro apps don't make sense. By and large. I mean, some of them might, but most of them don't make sense on such a screen. It's just too inefficient. And, you know, right. when you're interacting with a non-touch screen using a mouse and a keyboard, the, the, the app bar buttons are always in the far corners, and it's just a bizarre way to interact with a computer when you're using a traditional interface. Oh, we talk, did we talk about this last week? This is what lets you run Metro apps in a windowed environment. Yeah. Was this my pick last week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's, it's in beta. Is it free from beta? No, you four, can try it for free. Four ninety nine, yeah. which is not so bad. Yeah. I'll, I'll take right. that's, it. That's 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 the final price too. So if you buy that, yeah, you get the final oh. version. I think for that. Yeah, I've used Starduck stuff that... for years. I mean, going back probably to Windows ninety eight, sure. but um, I always felt like it's bogged things down just the slightest. I wasn't sure about reliability. Well, I, I can tell you that this, uh, you know, Stardate to me is like Mary Jo said, a little controversial. I I think that. You know, the, the start screen stuff is not optimal necessarily on a not on touch display, but it's workable. I mean, I, I personally don't really have too much of an issue with it. It's a little jarring, you know, especially when you do Windows search. But um, the ability to run Metro apps in a window, to me, has transformed this into what it should have been all along. And, and literally a year and a half ago, whatever, I asked for exactly this capability. And it makes a really big difference because there are Metro apps I do like to run. And now I use them literally more often than I did before because the, I can run them side by side with my other applications. So do you do you still use your Metro Start screen? Or? Yeah, so I've been experimenting with doing it both ways. So on, on the laptop here that I'm using, I actually do have Start 8 installed as well. And that Start menu replacement or Start screen replacement works in a few different ways. And you can make it look like Windows 7, which I don't think you should do. But again, you know, some people really, really want that. Um, you can have it look like Windows 8, but have it be over the desktop instead. So it's basically the Windows 8 start screen, but in kind of a window or kind of a menu, I guess, like the old menu, but bigger. Um, and they have different styles and color schemes and all that kind of stuff. But to me, the 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 modern mix thing is a big, big deal. Hmm. Really cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because to you me, the reason I... play solitaire in on the desktop. <laughs> well, no, but... 
<laughs> no, but but like if if you're somebody like me who like the reason I didn't want to have when you guys sent me this awesome big screen Optiplex, I didn't want to have Windows 8 on it is because I don't want to run only one or two apps at a time, right? right. I, that full screen I app run, thing is bad. Yeah. Yep, yep. All my apps, you know. Yep, yep. Well, so if, if I, you run regular apps, I mean, regular desktop apps, um, yeah. you're used to working a certain way, and you get notifications, right. you know, maybe in the icon on the taskbar and so forth. And when you're running full screen, those things don't happen. And so we really do live in a mixed environment now, and it makes sense for these things to be available in one place, and that's what this enables. You know, everybody's moving that way. Apple's done the same thing too, you know. Yeah. Um. So I, to me, this one... Do you think this is an interim fix, or is... No, I don't think Microsoft is ever going to enable this capability. They're never do so, this. This is Again, uh, 1.3 billion people have regular computers, and if whatever percentage of those want to or have upgraded to Windows 8, I think this is an excellent way to make that transition. You know, maybe your next computer is a touch computer. Maybe it's some crazy hybrid, transforming, yoga, bending, splitting, whatever thing. But in the meantime, we have you know, work to do and we have <laughs> lives to get on with and we have regular computers that are going to last for years and years and five bucks is not a lot of money to spend no. to make that work. All right. So that's one way to fix Microsoft uh, Windows 8. What's another way to fix Microsoft? How about Windows Phone? Anything wrong with that? No. I can tell you, after using the BlackBerry <laughs> Z10 for about three seconds, I'm about to throw this thing out the window. <laughs> sure. So... You got that going for you. <laughs> it's not the worst phone on the market. No, I, I actually, I love my Windows phone. I think still. they're really I, good. I don't think there's anything wrong with Windows phone. No, but the but the fix where we were talking about when Paul and I were going back and forth about Windows phone and like how, how would that be fixed was very much inspired by something that Google did this week, which was Andy Rubin's out yeah. as the head of Android. Android's now part of the Chrome OS group. And, you know, this has been rumored to be happening at Microsoft for years, right? Like, how long have we been saying Steven Sanofsky was going to end up heading up both Windows and yeah, Windows Phone? Yeah. I think, like, three years, four yeah. years, maybe. Um, sure. It still and has look how well that happened. worked out. I know, I know. right. <laughs> well, well, again, never Microsoft can never implement. <laughs> right, right, yeah, it never, right. that yeah. never happened. Right. Um, and it still hasn't happened. Windows but Phone. Chrome OS and Chrome are very different from Android. I don't know if, I don't I really know. understand this I also move. am not positive we're getting this mix right. I would say that the they're part of the same team and the same man is running both projects. But uh, there's an assumption that, um, you know, Android becomes part of Chrome, that it's like something that runs in no, Chrome or something. No, no, no. I think the opposite is far more likely. Yeah. That Chrome is, Chrome's just an app. It could run within Android. And Android OS is a far more <clears> capable <throat> operating system than Chrome OS. That's um, what I think. Um, that's what I think. But, but if in that case, you keep the Android guy and you boot the Chrome guy. Or <laughs> you turn him into a Chrome Android guy. Have you seen that photograph? <laughs> you know, personally, and we did, we chewed this uh, kind of endlessly on uh, Twig yesterday, and I think I came to the conclusion, I, I believe that, in fact, it really has nothing to do with anything that we're thinking, that Andy Rubin really just wanted to move on, and they and they found something more. He's, he's entrepreneurial. He's a startup guy. He's been yeah. 10 years on this project. I think he's going to work on robots because that's his big passion. Mm. Seriously, he's totally into robots. That's why the Android is a robot. It and makes sense that Skynet would be developed by yeah. uh, Google as well. Yeah. So, so the, so the machines uh, took over, and who's going to help it? Andy Rubin. Meanwhile, Sundar Pichai, who runs Chrome OS and Chrome, he's you know a nice, trustworthy, kind of mm -hmm. mainstream kind of guy. Um, he may not be a permanent head of Android. You know, Android is less and less. Believe it or not, with all its success, it's less mm. important for Google because. They've lost control of it. It's been yeah. forked. Sure. And now, now I, I thought, though, Eric Schmidt and other people have gone on record saying the plan at some point is to have one OS, isn't it? Like, I mean, that it, the OS that's going to be on uh, Chromebooks and the OS on phones is one thing. No? Well, I don't know. You know, I ordered the Pixel finally, and I'll have it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. Um, because I'm made of money. <laughs> and, uh, yes. Right. And uh, like that Geico commercial just flies off. They will make a right fine there. bidet someday, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Solid unibody for construction. Yeah. No, but um, one of the reasons I was willing to get it is because I can run Android and Linux on it, uh, real operating systems. Mm -hmm. um, so you you might have a point there, but I don't think that that's why, what they're selling with Chrome OS. They're selling a super secure, basic, simple operating system. 
Um, sure. And I, Android is not sure. that. Android is the opposite yeah. of that. It, yeah. Android, you know, Android is fairly complex. Um, it's yeah. not secure. It's very complex. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm very curious to see. Google I.O. this year is going to be very interesting. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going. In fact, we're going to do, uh, we'll do our show uh, live from Google I.O. on, uh, what is it, May 15th. But the, the point that uh, Mary Jo has not here with show, us. by the way. No, not no, the show. I wouldn't do that, would do that to you. <laughs> with uh, merging the teams is a, is a valid one because Google, in their own strategy, is obviously uh, hemorrhaging services that don't make sense and they're trying to consolidate things down. Um, but outside of that, I would just say, these types of products are merging into one. It's not any bit of a stretch to say a smartphone and a tablet are the same thing. And increasingly, these uh, computer devices are also the same thing. You, and, know, uh, you, know, you know perfectly well how to fix Windows Phone 8. Ship it two years earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's really, the, I, in my I opinion... go back in time and do that. It's the only uh, thing wrong with it. It just came out too late. Had it come out... Um, it's it's fascinating to me that you just said that because I was talking to a couple of friends from Microsoft uh, on this trip and they kind of said the same thing that, you know, there's a point in time where it doesn't matter how good something exactly. is if you're so late. Exactly. And that Windows 8 may suffer from that, you know, with tablets, uh, Windows Phone certainly. I've been, do I've been doing this long enough now. I'm an old man. I remember BOS, much better operating system. Yeah. I love BOS. But Windows and Mac were well established. There was it there yep. and there were no apps. It was just no it was no need for it. It wasn't yep. that it wasn't better. It was better. And I could I, I could think I, of I, dozens of examples. Obviously Apple's decision to buy next was the right one in, in retrospect. In retrospect but that's uh, right. at the time I was we, really disappointed I know, we that hoped I was it had nothing to do with Steve Jobs and Next Step. It had everything to do with the fact that I just thought it was such a cool system. It, it was great. Just, and from Apple's yeah. point of view, bringing back Steve Jobs was preferable to bringing back Jean-Louis Gasset. I mean, right. there were lots of reasons why they did it that were not technical. Yep. Um, but the, but that's not uh, that's another topic. Yeah. Uh, the truth is, the only thing, in my opinion, wrong with Windows Phone 8 is that it's a little too late. Latest and market. and I don't think merging it with Windows 8 solves anything. Solves anything. Yeah. It doesn't make well, it a better product. Windows 8 is a runaway success. I'm not sure why you think that. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> you know. But, well, yeah, but you know, the one thing we know they are doing, right, is is um, with Blue and mm -hmm. and uh, even before Blue, they, they're trying to make the developer platform and the app model more common between the two. That's why you saw them make the core of Windows Phone, um, Windows NT, right, instead of Windows CE. So they're, Microsoft's kind of moving that way, not just on the UI end, but also in the guts of the products to make them more alike so that the, the idea, I think, is, hey, we don't have that many uh, Windows 8 apps. We don't have that many Windows Phone apps. What if we could take two small piles of apps and bring them together? <laughs> One then we big, have a little make one little big bigger. pile of app. <laughs> one big pile of apps, yeah. <laughs> I know there's a pony in there somewhere. <laughs> oh boy. It's a winning strategy. <laughs> yeah. You see though, it's really challenging. I, I it gotta is, yeah. it's very challenging. This is not easy stuff. No. And the best I think that some of the the smartest people in the world are people working in the technology industry trying to figure this stuff out. Yep. And because, you know, the smartest people were drawn to this because it was uh, changing things. And um, that doesn't mean it's an easy it's an easy solution. Yeah. yeah and I, and Microsoft's strategy, again, is sound. I mean, it's, it was the right thing to do. It was actually pretty aggressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. It hasn't translated into sales or anything. It doesn't change the fact that had they done the reverse, had they done the thing that I might have personally preferred, it not it would have gone even worse. You know, <laughs> that they would have accelerated their decline. Yeah. Okay, so so, don't so, to us. so we've, we've fixed, <laughs> no, don't ever listen to we've us. We fixed Windows eight. We've we've tried to fix Windows Phone. Uh, certainly, that would be a good thing to do. I don't think it'd be a bad thing to do to merge the two. It's Microsoft. All you know, uh, there, there's a future for for phone at Microsoft, and this is, sounds heretical, maybe, and I think I've brought this up before, but there's no reason that Microsoft can't skin Android as well, and uh, uh, piggyback on existing system has an amazing app library, mm -hmm. put their apps and services on there. Have a and, Microsoft uh, store just as uh, Amazon does for Android and yep. vet the stuff, make sure it's secure. Yep. There's yep. an opportunity there. You know, I look at the uh, HTC One, the next HTC phone, and they've skinned it. They've skinned Android to look like Windows Phone in some ways. Oh, they really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So it I mean, could, why not? Why not? Oh, yeah. I like that. You know, because if the issue is apps, that everything else that's special about Windows Phone can be on that system. You know, if the if the only issue is apps, if that's really the reason oh, no one is buying this thing, that solves that problem immediately. Yeah. 
Now, they're never going to do what I just said. It's kind of a I'm Hail not, Mary. I, yeah, I'm not necessarily <laughs> recommending. I'm just saying that there's a, you know, there is an alternative. Yeah. Okay, um, RT. Let's talk about RT. I don't know. I think RT is... Um, the Titanic? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's so one way to put it. Although they are building a new Titanic. I don't know who's going to sit. Did you see that? No. no. And that's, that's incredible. They're building a duplicate Titanic. They should fly the new Hindenburg over it on its first what? That's crazy. Place. Who's going to buy tickets? It's going to be Daredevils. Evil Knievel will buy a, a suite, but I don't know who you else. Know, you know, lightning doesn't strike twice in the same <laughs> place. I mean. Yeah, and it, it's an unsinkable ship. And how? what are the chances it would run into an iceberg? And, and there are no modern stories about people having problems on big boats these days. <laughs> right. So We've really fixed on? that problem, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're uh, building a new Titanic. The Titanic 2. I they didn't even change the name. The Titanic too? Is they gonna call it Electric <laughs> Boogaloo? <laughs> what, are you kidding me? It, it's the a, Titanic two, the quickening. It's 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 <laughs> I know. I mean that's, maybe that's they've crazy. got a deal. It could be they have a deal with James Cameron uh to make a <laughs> sequel. I don't know. So it's actually gonna look like the old boat? It's gonna look exactly like the old boat. And, of Except course, not, notice okay. this when they uh, when ABC News is telling the story. Of course, they show clips from all the Titanic movies of the boat sinking. That's got to help ticket sales. I would, uh, okay, so wait. Are they actually going to have enough rescue boats this time? Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, is it yeah. going to be that? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how uh, how much of a replica is <laughs> it's going to be. Uh, they you say exactly exact. You chance to ride an exact <laughs> replica. <laughs> this is, you might want to you might want to get in early on this one. <laughs> oh, boy. That's crazy. So... Anything can happen. Maybe like the surface so RT. Funny. RT is a lot like the Titanic, too, because it looks <laughs> no. a lot like Windows. <laughs> but it's not. I disagree. Okay. I like my surface RT. You like it. I still like it. Yeah. I, I, maybe I'm the party one like, here. I, like I feel bad because I broke mine, so I'll never know how good it yeah. was. Yeah. I'm so sad about that. <sighs> never, Twitter app, Leo. Oh, the Twitter app. The Twitter app is here. We'll, we'll talk about that yeah. later. Yeah. They are. But no, so Dr. Pisa had a good article recently entitled windows rt is a lemon here's how microsoft can make some lemonade ah. and um you know one of the things he talked about is one of the things i really think could change the the perception of windows rt and surface rt which is put outlook on there real outlook right <laughs> and right. maybe real infopath and maybe real publisher like put the rest of the office oh yeah that's a good idea there. i mean i think it was really and, smart to put office on there to begin better, with you know better still would be Actual Metro versions of the Office apps, you know, not right. just OneNote and Link, but, you know, Word, Excel, but that PowerPoint. That would take writing something. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it actually requires work. I get that. Yes. But I really, I mean, they have to be working on this. They have to be. They are. For sure they are. They are. That's no attractive. Question. Get rid of desktop. RT2. <laughs> the quick <name. laughs> Get rid of. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> get, rid of, get rid of desktop, but still contain Office, but Metro of, and the full Office Metro. Right, and maybe that's you don't kind put of it, compelling. I don't mind right, that. Maybe you don't put it. Uh. All no, you know what they could do? They could they could say, if you buy Office 365 Home Premium, right now you can also download these apps onto your Surface onto RT, RT, which you cannot do right now, right? Yeah. Because there aren't ARM versions of anything right. except for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. That's an but excellent But you know idea, those but... things exist. Off, I'm positive Outlook oh, RT absolutely. exists. Absolutely, absolutely. I know yeah, it's that, there. Definitely, yeah. Now I and, um, I would buy that, right? Yep. A I lot like of that. I think business users would buy it because it would give them a, a really locked down, cheap <sighs> alternative. Isn't that kind of though what Windows eight point five would be? Yeah, really, kind. <laughs> Isn't it? I mean, we we, we if we, there were such a thing, Leo. <laughs> right. I mean, don't we want to phase out the desktop in general? I think so. And so a first step would be an an RT without desktop, but with full office. Right. Metro. Metro style. Right. To show people that they're, that that uh, Metro apps don't just have to be toys, right? Because if you look right. what's in the store now, most things are very lightweight, small, right. fun things, games. Um, they're kind of toy apps for the most part. Well, not, and Leo not is fun. running an app right now that is contrary to that, right? The, maybe the One app, which yeah. is the One, yeah. one app. Is great. Right. I love it. No, those, That's a great but, example. And those apps... Right, those are examples of like here you can have real apps on. on that's an thing. office. That's a full office app, you know. Yep. And yep. on the touch screen, you get that craziness where like if you just touch a part of the screen there, you get that little um, a little circular menu that yeah, comes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's really yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. Which that is, is kind of amazing. Yeah. 
Yep. Let's tap that. This all guy. makes sense. Yeah. In a, and in fact, yeah. it's funny because this is also in. Is this not in the non? It's in the desktop no, version. No, it's just in. Oh, the, it's just in the RT. Yeah. This is unique to this. Yeah. There's a reason why Microsoft calls it the modern UI. It's not old school UI. It's not our former UI. It's, no. It's the future, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Right. Um, I, I like that. I think that that, you know, get, damn it, now I have to fix my RT. <laughs> Put it in the shop. Come on. Yeah, but, you know, uh, they'll probably fix it for free. I'm thinking they will. I mean, what? what <laughs> how many? No, I'm serious. So it, 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 they can't possibly be out of warranty. They've only been selling them well, since Well, I October. dropped it. It cracked. I mean, it's it's my error. Oh, I see. So I would still bring it to them and see what they do. I should. If I could find a Microsoft say. store, I would do that. <laughs> You at least have some Microsoft stores in California. Why is it more Microsoft stores part of this list? <laughs> That's like, that. Well, pr presumably they're working on that. Right. Uh, yeah. Those are success. Are they a success? Would you say the Microsoft stores? I think they're really important. I, I really think there. they need to have these yeah, things. They need them. And it, because you know, one of the things right? that's going right. to happen in the future is these big box stores are going to go away, or at least be less common. Right. And you need a place where you can go and actually see why, these devices. I really, really it. think these are important. That's why Apple did it. Yeah, yeah. They didn't. They didn't expect to make millions of dollars per square foot. They did it right. because they needed a showroom. Apple's uh, need to make stores was even greater at the time because they That's didn't right. have the outlet, even though those outlets existed for other companies. That's right. Um, but eventually, well, maybe maybe I've got this reversed. I mean, eventually, those outlets are going to disappear for everybody. Meanwhile, I got to find a Microsoft store so I can. Bring, I think I have to drive to San Francisco. There's going to be one in California somewhere. <laughs> yes, of, of course there is. <laughs> there are a few. <laughs> I think there's one in San Francisco. I just it's. Sure. I, I have to drive an hour to bring it there on the possibility that they'll look at the crack and say, "Oh, that's our yeah, fault." Driving an hour to go to a Microsoft store is one of the greatest days you're going to ever have. <laughs> Did I mention it's an hour back? They closed the one in San Francisco. They closed the one in San Francisco. Oh, but they're going to open a permanent. That was a pop up. Yeah, it's, it, uh, you, you're going to get a permanent what, store. Whatever so. pops up must come down. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Don't get me talking about no New York store again. There's <laughs> still no New York store? They closed no. the... Yeah. Are there a yeah. lot of people there? It seems like they would want a store. I, there's not that many people here. Do you have to go to Long Island? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. New you got to add that to the list. Store. Item it's five. <laughs> a Manhattan Microsoft yep. store. New York City. Yeah. But I do love your idea, Mary Jo. And I, so you, Mary Jo is standing in defense of, uh, of Surface RT. Yeah. And I think you're exactly right. Uh, I wonder, how are the OEM uh, RT devices selling? Are they selling at all? There are not many of them. Leo, do you have one of those uh, radio station boards where they have like cricket sounds? <laughs> you know, things like that? Because that's how it is. <laughs> yeah. I could probably find crickets. Yeah. Uh, uh. I don't. Oh. We don't really know how they're selling, but we don't think they're selling too well. We and, and we also don't think the Surface RTs are have sold very well. Right. Oh, really? No. Surface Pro, yes. <laughs> From here in the Microsoft Store, it's like a Surface RT with sleep apnea. <laughs> it's a little quiet right now. <laughs> All right. Finally. I noticed, by the way, there's no Fire Steve Ballmer on this list. Kudos to you for not taking you know what, the though? easy way Seriously, out. Seriously, if, if there's anyone on Earth who could actually come up with a viable replacement for Steve Ballmer, along with explanations about why he could possibly magically do a better job, I'd love to hear about this person. Right. I really don't think that person exists. You don't think any of this is Steve's fault? No. Actually, I really, I really don't, personally. But... Right. Go ahead, Mary Jo. I'm sorry. I think <laughs> introducing the mobile, uh, the phones late is a Balmer problem. You, do? you would blame him for that? I would. Because he, he kept saying, iPhone, ha, huh, right? And uh, just let Windows oh. Mobile kind of drag on and on and on. And then suddenly yeah. they okay. get the reset. The, the iPhone comments I can't discredit him for because, you know, one that's taken wildly out of context is, you yeah. know, when the iPhone was first released, it was $600. And it was crazy expensive compared to everything else. And only for a how, month or two. It wasn't. I know, long. but the, the quote they keep bringing up from Steve Ballmer, supposedly being clueless about the iPhone, was from that one month period, and right. he was right. And so, and by the way, Apple changed the pricing, so yeah, I guess he was right about it. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but you're, but Mary Jo is right, uh, and I that my, one of the most frustrating series of uh, 
meetings I've ever had with Microsoft over the years was with the Windows Mobile people and how absolutely clueless they were about where the market was going. And they'd actually said to me in one meeting, uh, you know, the success of the iPhone validates their theory that consumers would embrace multi-touch devices. And it's one <laughs> we were of, right. <laughs> no, I'm serious. And it was, I'll never forget this meeting. And I was typing on my phone, on my uh, computer, and I stopped typing. And I looked up at this person and I said, do you actually hear the words that come out of your mouth? I mean, that was, that was insane, you know? Yeah. Uh, those people were absolutely clueless. And I still hear defenses for Windows Mobile to this day, though. People will say, well, you know, you know, Windows Mobile was designed to take on Palm, and we, we beat Palm, you know? Uh, that's great. That's great. Um, I'm, we beat Britain in the world of 1812, <laughs> but that was a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, things have moved on since then, so maybe we need to move up to the modern day. Um, yeah, Windows Mobile was, uh, yeah, I guess you could throw that at Steve Ballmer's feature. But regardless of Steve Ballmer, uh, the, the fix I like the most here, and I, it's funny, I, it's awful in a way because I obviously I follow Microsoft, write about Microsoft. Um, I keep coming back to this again and again over 20 years of watching this company. Um, I keep coming back to this notion that they need to be broken up. And the thing that's interesting about that is that the reasons I would give today have nothing to do with the reasons I would have given, say, in the wake of the Microsoft antitrust trial in the United States, where at the time, it's comical today, I was talking to this, those guys from Microsoft about this, I, I happened to catch the movie Antitrust on TV uh, recently, and it's really funny to think how scared we were of Microsoft. The movie Antitrust is a very thin, thinly veiled reference to Microsoft. It's, it's Bill Gates as a murderer. You know, it's, it's crazy like how scared we were of those people. This is a Steve Ballmer character, a bald guy, looks just like Steve Ballmer. Um, they're, you know, they're today are obviously a, a giant panda bear compared to what they were in, you know, 1999 or whatever. But it's very clear to me that Microsoft makes one type of product really well, and those are enterprise products, business products, productivity products, and that the consumer stuff, not so much. And um, I think that those should be the companies. I think that Microsoft should continue as a company that's, but by the way, basically just as big as it is now that is the, the enterprise company, the corporate company, and that they should have a consumer company spinoff called Xbox, which takes um, obviously the Xbox, and their uh, entertainment stuff, their um, consumer services, you know, Xbox music and video and all that kind of stuff. Much smaller company, but one where the, the smaller market that is served by those products actually makes sense and is a viable business. You know, that Mary Jo talks about uh, where are Microsoft's next $1 billion businesses? And it's kind of a scary list of possibilities. It's not a very good list. And I don't mean that Mary Jo created, but that the possibilities <laughs> that they have. It's so a terrible article, Mary jo. <laughs> No, I mean, I, you, know, that, you know, they don't really have that many great choices. Um, it, the Xbox, it would be a great smaller business. It would be a great smaller business. But as part of Microsoft, it almost doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, does anyone really believe that the next Xbox is going to be some kind of living room force when you can buy $49 to $99 Roku devices and WD devices and uh, Apple TVs and all these other little things. This, this, is, this is not a major business. Right. And, and you know, not. so we're, we're talking about these billion dollar businesses. So Mike, Microsoft always talks about this. They say, you know, the, I, the ideal is to have businesses in the company that grow to $1 billion. And they have a whole list of which businesses have grown to that point. And yep. if you look at the list of ones that from the past that are already there, it's like Windows Office, SharePoint, which is $2 billion already, um, mm -hmm. the CRM products, System Center, it's all their enterprise products, and Xbox is on there. But it, I just found a but, list this I mean, week. Xbox is like a negative something it, billion business if you actually factor now, in how much Yeah, I needed. know, right. But, but, yes. but I, I found this list um, of businesses they're incubating that they think could be the next billion dollar businesses. And listen what's on this list, because you'll you'll not be surprised if you realize Microsoft's an enterprise company. Windows right. Azure is on the list as the next possible billion. Mm -hmm. Windows Intune, Bing Maps, Store Simple, which is a cloud storage appliance. Perceptive Pixel are those big touchscreen displays that, that we talked about. not a billion dollar business, sorry. Not yet. Never. Not yet. And then Parallel Data Warehouse, which is their giant um, <laughs> database warehousing appliance. Okay. But I heard the consumer version of that's really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Windows it's for, Home for Server, iPhone. Paul. <laughs> for iPhone. <laughs> yeah. But know. this is where Microsoft makes their money, everybody. Like right. people yeah, keep saying Xbox, company. right? Well, oh, no, it's not. You know, <laughs> never say, made money. It like it's obvious, but, you know, it's Microsoft, it's Microsoft that doesn't mm -hmm. understand that this is not the case. That yeah. Microsoft is the enterprise company. Get rid of Xbox. Mm. 
Just get rid of Xbox and make mm -hmm. that the consumer thing. Yeah. It's so simple. Although, although if they do this, like if, if, I mean, I don't think they ever would do this because they, they maintain that, that they their consumer that products they loved, enterprise. They love having a brand that people care about. They do. They do. But if yeah. they ever did, what would make money in the consumer company? Like, would they have to take some of SharePoint's $2 billion and like give them to the Xbox company? No, I, I, I think the Xbox, the reason that, that this would work, and it's it's kind of a classic spinoff when you think about it, the R&D has already gone into it, right? In other words, they're free of the, the, you know, the debt of the past because now it's starting fresh as a new company. Um, they, they can address the market that is 50 to 80 million active users of games, you know, uh, of uh, because ultimately, you know, the living room stuff that they're doing is very attractive to people that want the Xbox because they're going to play video games. But a big kind of computery thing that sits in the living room that lets you get on Netflix is not very attractive when you can get Netflix through a TV, through your iPad, through every single cheap device on earth. I mean, th there's no reason to have the overhead of such a device f to get to the things that you want. You know, uh, the Xbox business, uh, the hardware business, the, the console business is, is games. It's yeah, just games. Yeah. The other stuff is a sideshow. Okay. Do you want to talk about breaking them up? Or you kind of did? That yeah, was kind of it. Bit. That was, kind, that was of kind of it. Yeah. <laughs> Enterprise and consumer, and then you throw away the consumer. And by the way, it's you know, like how to make the perfect martini. This two, is a rabbit two parts, hole. two parts gin, one part vermouth, and you throw away the vermouth. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Stop pretending they want this, you know, the sugary green drink. It costs them a lot of money to maintain Xbox, and I, I still don't know if they made any money on it. I'm positive they have not. Search, big, big hole. They're throwing money into. It's an investment, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. I, I think we just fixed Microsoft, and God, I just hope that they're listening in on the phone line. In fact, Paul, I know they are, so that's the good news. You're staying I'm not sure they're not happy about it. I can tell you that. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by ShareFile from Citrix. A great solution. I use uh, ShareFile myself all the time to share files. It makes sense, right? With the uh, I do audio uh, files for radio stations. The other day... Uh, a show asked me to make a video clip, so I, I recorded the clip, and then I put it on a share file so they could download it. Um, I met somebody in a, uh, a restaurant. We were talking about cameras. Her, her uh, little son was there, very adorable boy. I took some pictures. She said, oh, I want those pictures. I said, no problem. I can get them to you. Sharefile.com. It really is great. It is a business solution designed by business for business. Let me uh, show you my share file account because one of the things I love about it is it's 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 branded. It's it doesn't look like a share file site. It looks like a Twit site. I've got my Twit logo on it. If I want to share files with somebody, I have an Outlook plugin that I can just send it just like email. But you know, it's better than email. This is what the problem is. Email is insecure. Email, uh, you can't send these big files that people want these days. Uh, in fact, it, there's still in email inboxes. Quite a few of them. The 10 megabytes will be bounced. Anything more? Those pictures I took, each one of them was 13 megabytes. 250 megabytes total. No problem with share file. I sent her a link. She clicked the link, downloaded the files. You can uh, password protect the files. You can even control how many times they can be downloaded by whom, uh, for how long. You really have control of all of this. You can send files of almost any size. Highest degree of security. I'll tell you how secure. It's HIPAA compliant. So if you're in the medical business, you know the, the regulations for patient privacy are very onerous, but they're satisfied by ShareFile. In fact, ShareFile satisfies requirements of a great many industries. That's why when you go to sharefile.com and you click the try it free button and use our promo code windows, one of the first thing they're going to ask you is what industry would you like to customize your share file for? And pick the industry. Uh, you know, you don't have to, of course, but if you pick the industry, it's a great idea because then you can see how it can help you. Anything from accounting, advertising, architecture, biotech, education, energy. I mean, I can go on and on. There's literally dozens of industries supported by ShareFile. So enter the name Windows as your offer code, uh, and just so that Paul gets credit, Paul and Mary Jo get credit. And let's say we're in the legal profession. We'll set up our account. It'll set it up just for, uh, you know, the kind of work you do, so it's great. You're just going to love uh, ShareFile. It is a fantastic way to share files. 30 days free right now, ShareFile.com. Use the offer code Windows. Perhaps you have tried other solutions, even some... 
uh, consumer grade solutions. This is the pro solution that gives you total control and it's completely customized to fit your brand and your business. Sharefile.com. Give it a try today, free. Paul Throp, Mary Joe Foley, we're talking about Windows. Um, I don't have my Windows RT. Mary, maybe Mary Jo can do this because they've changed the flash but blacklist, and we were on the blacklist. We were not whitelisted. It's not a blacklist. It's a whitelist, isn't it? Is that how it works, Paul? I don't. I, it is a. <laughs> what color is the list? <laughs> right. Puce. So it's, it's hard it keeping this straight. It's a white. <laughs> it's a white list, which means that. It, on a Windows RT, or, and in, I guess this is true on, on Metro, uh, is this true on Metro Windows 8? Uh, Leo, it's trying to figure out the matrix of where this is true <laughs> is un unbelievable. But Not all I, flash sites worked. No, it really is unbelievable. So, But the thing, this goes back almost three years. Uh, Dean Hamachevich, I never get his last name correct, I'm sorry, Dean, uh, wrote a blog post talking about how HTML5 video was the future. It is. And uh, basically said, you know, we understand that people need flash, and, and but... HTML5 it's is the future. And I, and I think they were trying to jumpstart the Flash sites from you know to use HTML5. Right. As was Apple. Uh, clearly, that never really happened. So yeah. one of the deals with Windows RT in particular is that it has certain promises that it makes about the reliability, the performance, and uh, the stability you know of the system that it will be consistent. And Flash is something that doesn't work within the confines of those goals. And so they worked with Adobe to put a uh, a subset of some version, you know, recent version of Flash into the browser in both Windows 8 and in Windows RT, where there was a white list of sites that were acceptable, were known to work within the, the confines of this new system. Right. And it impacts the Metro version of the browser in both systems the and the desktop version of the browser in Windows RT because you can't install plugins, right? So you can't go on Windows RT and install the Flash right. plugin and get the full Flash. That That's why it works right. that way. Right. And so now I guess time has gone by, and I don't, I don't think anything has actually changed. They seem to indicate that, you know, it's like the, 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 you know, the web community gets it, and now the Flash sites are all, you know, written better or something. I, I think basically what happened was a lot of people complained. Yeah, because Flash realized, is no less insecure. Yeah, and I think that not having full flash was maybe one of the many things about Windows RT that was uh, on a list of reasons why people weren't buying them. So yeah. they basically just completely reversed course on this. It's really kind of fascinating. It's completely, it is literally the opposite of the way it was. So my question to you, Mary, maybe Mary Jo, are you sitting in front of your RT? Yeah, no, I'm not, but I oh, can right. get it. Because we don't I know. know. Maybe some, well, the chat room will know. Yeah, I, I, I know we were, it was blacklisted before, right? Like It, it was not working. whitelisted. It was not, it was not whitelisted. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, okay, so in Windows 8, though, I, I'm running Windows 8. I should be able to yeah, that's, see but, this. But you can install Flash on Windows 8, so that's not an No, issue. but not in the Metro version, right? So this impacts version. the Metro okay. version. So if I were to load this browser, oh, well, I could do which that. I can now run in a window, by the way, which I love, <sighs> You're and so go lucky. to... <laughs> try Twit. Uh, I don't know. Should I try live? But live dot stream TV? is that what it is? Live dot twit dot TV. I'll try it too. You do. Uh, I'll do twit dot TV. You do live dot twit dot TV. Okay. Well, now we supposedly have HTML five solutions. It's, yeah, I was gonna say it, it looks like it's. Oh, let me see what it does. Uh, works on my uh, twit dot TV. Works on Metro, IE on my Acer. Because there, yep. I see you, and I see me, and I see me showing you, showing me. Okay. When you go to live.twit.tv, you briefly get that flash icon, uh, but then yeah. it does work. It works. Yeah, it works. So good. So we are, I guess, whitelisted. Okay. The emergency is over. God bless America. Well, actually, I think the way to say it is we're not blacklisted. <laughs> because everyone is whitelisted now, except that those... Ah, are on the list. So they did flip it. So it was a white list. You had, and it was a small <laughs> list. And I wonder we, if it, do you think it's related to the size of the list? Like they got to a point where it's too big. The black list would just be a shorter <laughs> list. It's short, yeah, well, I guarantee you, it's shorter. <laughs> now I think your I think your theory is right, Paul. I think it's because people. people it said, was like one yeah. more thing. People were just like, yeah. oh, not another thing that doesn't work on on yeah. this. Well, you know, it must gall them a little bit because Apple did it. And, I know. And Apple sold iPads and iPhones. But letter to customers, you yeah. know, they talked about uh, how yeah. Steve uh, yeah. Flash is the devil, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, didn't I have to say I love getting Flash on my iP on my uh, iPad on my Surface RT though. It's perfect. I you should. 
I love having it. Yeah. I know not everyone thinks this is a good move, but I love it. Oh, I disagree. I think it is a good move. There, look, you Flash do. is a mess. Flash is so. In fact, there were security flaws just fixed just the yeah. other day. Uh, but so is Adobe Java, Reader. So is Java. So is the right. world. Yeah. Right. If you could just combine like Flash and Android into one package, that must be the most <laughs> incredible, unreliable, insecure. Well, you know, what's funny is that uh, uh, even Adobe won't make Flash for mobile anymore. They stopped the uh, making it for yeah. mobile. Yeah. But but that was a performance issue too. That it was a poor experience because the hardware really wasn't up to it. I don't think you can say that about RT, but any of the RT devices they can. Well, play. you've been using it, so is it? Yeah, is they could play Flash, right? No problem. Yeah. Wasn't great yeah. on the phone. Wasn't great on many. I think now Android phones with their quad and, yes, even eight core right. processors probably well, have no trouble. But now that it works on Windows RT, the hardware that's in a Windows phone device is essentially the same. And so the question naturally arises, are we going to get Flash on Windows Phone 8? Ah. I asked. <laughs> we have nothing to say about this at this time. Yeah. Just so you know, they're, they're not commenting, but they're not saying no either right how about xbox the xbox oh, browser geez. come on come on <laughs> no <laughs> i don't i don't know i uh, yeah just asking uh so uh speaking of blacklists what about the blue watch <laughs> <laughs> nice segue there from black to blue baby yeah, not, not a whole ton new on Blue this week. Um, Stephen Chapman, who's a really good Microsoft watcher and friend of ours, found a couple new Microsoft job posts and LinkedIn lists with people talking about Blue. The most, the most interesting one he found this week was um, Fresh Paint, the Fresh Paint team at Microsoft saying that they're extending the product to take advantage of Blue. And everybody's like, well, what does that mean? Does that mean applications that already work on Windows 8 and Windows RT are not going to automatically work on Blue? No, that's not what I think it means. I think I think it just means we're making sure that an app like Fresh Paint, which is this oil painting app that Microsoft came out with for Windows 8, uh, that it will work really well on smaller screens, which is one of the things that Blue is optimized to uh, work on. So that was, that was the most interesting blue thing this week. Um, nothing new in terms of builds or progress. Um, I haven't heard any new rumors or updates on it. Have you, Paul, anything new? No. We got to get Steven on the show, though. We do. Yeah. Yeah, we should. And um, how long was Outlook.com down, just out of curiosity? It was like three days? Well, if you're waiting to get your email, it was an eternity. It was, uh, <laughs> See, it was over a day. It was a long time. Yeah, I didn't have too many. I didn't have issues. Like my mine was never down, but I, I certainly. Mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, servers I don't know were they, overwhelmed. Was that it? <laughs> the server. This is what they said last night when they did a post mortem. The server got too hot. <laughs> they really said that. I'm not kidding. That's what it said. <laughs> I know. Just yeah. open a door. <laughs> <laughs> what, but okay, but this begs the question: the server. Really? I know. Yeah. For Hotmail and Outlook together? I wouldn't read too much into that. I, you know, Microsoft probably thinks about these things as, like, the, the server might literally mean the data center. Yeah. You know? The data, but, but, but that's an even bigger thing. Like, the data get center got too hot? So, I mean, I don't know how deep we want to get into this, but apparently as, as part of the process of upgrading from Hotmail to Outlook.com, there's a, a firmware upgrade that occurs on uh. whatever weird hardware they use. It has never caused any problems, but this time, for some reason, there was an error, and it triggered this heat, and as part of the automatic, uh, you know, safety routines, it shut everything down, and hey, then they had know. to bring people in. You know, then then the people had to come running in. Right. It must that have been like one of those Keystone Cop moments yeah. where, you know, they actually had to have human intervention. Is this what uh, Outlook.com is supposed to look like? Because that's... Yeah. That, yeah, that's okay. A, it's a nice new using, design. Is that Escape 4.1 or something? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking that there's still some issues because uh, obviously the CSS did not come in from uh, when I went to Outlook.com. So Bay 176, Microsoft Bay 176 is still, still too still. hot. Go in there and fix Bay 176. That's the machine. Still a little hot. Still a little warm to the touch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, this wasn't the only outage, by the way. Uh, there there were two other Hotmail and Outlook outages, two like back-to-back -back weeks before this one that they said mm -hmm. the data center got too hot. And, you know, I, I got to wonder, they're migrating tons and tons of people, like multiple millions of people are being moved over from Hotmail 
to Outlook right now. I know because I'm hearing from like hundreds of them. I, from I, all I really of them. sympathize with Paul <laughs> yeah. now. God, my, my, in, my inbox every day is full of people freaking out who are on Hotmail for like their whole lives suddenly being moved over by Microsoft to Outlook. And they're like, I can't find my contacts. They're gone. Microsoft uh, took them. Uh, or wow, it, what, what, is, yeah. what is this conversation view thing? I hate uh, it. How can I undo this is, it? But I, come on, this is like the second time this decade or whatever that these people have had to deal with this kind of thing. It's amazing. Like Hotmail users are so entrenched in their ways. Right. They are. Well, uh, they wouldn't still be using Hotmail if they weren't. Yeah. Right. yeah. But it's you know what? It, it For me, it's a great reminder of what Microsoft deals with because they have a billion users, right? Like we, we're always talking about, oh, the next generation and we care about, right. you know, touch right. and speech. Right. Most mm -hmm. people are just like, my Hotmail doesn't look like it looks like yesterday yep. and I'm What's scared. going on? Yeah, I get yeah. those calls. I'm going to write a stern show. letter to the local newspaper <clears throat> because that's how <laughs> yeah. people like that complain about things. Oh, yeah. I get those you calls know? on the radio show. You know, <laughs> something's wrong with my AOL email. <laughs> yeah. Get that like, all I think, the time. Like, stop there. I think I found the problem. Yeah. No, here's <laughs> another know? one. My yeah. net zero dial up isn't working anymore. Uh -oh. Yikes. And I still get people asking about web TV. Why? Oh, wow. Why did my web TV stop working? Stop Jeez. working three years ago, lady. You know, we're worried about getting phone <laughs> updates on this phone, and there are people still using web TV. But I expect in about four or five years somebody to call up and say, you know, my Microsoft Messenger doesn't work anymore. Oh, that, that'll, that'll, be that'll, be <laughs> that'll be me. I'll be angry still about that one. <laughs> yep. I don't know when it stopped, but I haven't received a message since 2013. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried that my daughter might be dead. I I hope Call. she's okay. Can you see if you can get her on Messenger? <laughs> exactly. Here's her handle. Lonely Girl 69. Can you check? <clears throat> Cuz I she's Wait, that's my sister. <laughs> I just, you know, I, we're, we're joking about this, but I really think Microsoft needs to do some things like put up some more videos for these people so that they're not flipping out. I don't want them all in my inbox every day. They need to get Mike Rowe in there and make some know, videos. The, the help stuff, obviously, uh, is one thing. Uh, what I, the, the email that always amuses me is it'll be someone who is just very unhappy with this change, like you said. And they'll write me and they'll say, can you explain to me why Microsoft decided to do this to me? You know, that kind of thing. And... You know, it's like looking into the mind of Microsoft. You know, like, why why did they want to hurt you? Uh, it's kind of hard to say. Well, I just, you know, say the guy who wrote it, it left. Yeah. And uh, they have a new guy, and he's got a better way. I was on the last free BSD server of Hotmail, and I really like the old interface. <laughs> Sorry. It's not 1999 anymore. I don't know yeah, what to tell you. Times, well, it's, but, you know. This is all new. We've never dealt with this because it, it's still relatively new, the computer industry. But now it's getting old enough that this kind of stuff is uh, is happening more often. And we have to get used to that. By the way, uh, how's calendar integration going? It, it's, it's good. It's good, right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, any it's proceeding exactly as it was. <laughs> no no one knows. We just don't know. Like I just, wanna, I just want to seriously want to stress <laughs> that... This is a CSS change would be enough. That that all, is all they have to hey, do. Hey, somebody should just volunteer the CSS file. Maybe. <clears throat> I never thought we'd be having these conversations. I really didn't. No. No, neither did I. Um, shall, uh, anything else you want to talk about before? We could do... Well, no, let's not. I was going to say a listener Q&A, which we still... You know, haven't done in ages. Listeners, do you have any questions at all for Paul and Mary Jo? Something quick. Something uh, something fast. Um, now, it takes a while because there's a little lag time. How much is... How Jimmy much Fallon is wants to know what's 2 plus 2. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about uh, Google Reader shutting down? Isn't that an opportunity for Microsoft now? Uh, <laughs> this, this one impacts me. Greatly. Me too. Me too. Every all tech journalist used this. Yep. I know. So I've looked at all the available people are going to make all these recommendations. I really, I'm right Feedly. now. I'm not interested. Feedly. Yeah, it, 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 it doesn't. It. No, it's not going to. It's no. too pretty for you. No, that's not the problem. It needs to work on everything that I use. Yeah. You yeah. know, one of the nice yeah. things about Google Reader is I can pop it on my phone and look uh, at it. Beautiful yeah, mobile interface. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. I know. It's very upsetting. And uh, no, this is not an opportunity for Microsoft to do it. Why, why would they put support for RSS and Outlook.com? No, I mean, I right. in the real world, it's who cares? It's already in about Outlook, it? though. No, Outlook.com. 
No, yeah, but if it's it is an, an Outlook, Outlook. You're right. Yep. You could right? use Outlook. Outlook. The Outlook. Export your OPML is, from your Google That'd be cool. Reader. I would yeah, like it in Outlook. Com. Oh, no, I would love it, too. I'm just saying there's no way they're yeah. going to do that. No? Yeah. All right, no. This, the, what, what's the business model? I mean, it's... Yeah, no. And that's the, why Google's shutting down. The next down. $1 business? I mean, yeah. it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> True. But it, but it's funny because uh, there's a disproportionate number of tech journalists that use this thing. Right. Apparently, right. nobody in the real world did, but we all do because we what we have to do is scan news feeds. I mean, is there one employee at Google taking care of this thing? The last time they had a blog post was in 2011. Like, why why not just leave it up? Yeah. Well, it does use a lot of, I imagine, a lot of server resources. I guess. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah. Dave Weiner said something interesting. He's a guy who wrote RSS was the mm -hmm. early proponent of this. He said, you know, I understand it because the the, the mailbox model of RSS, you know, you, here's your inbox, here's all the articles you haven't read, has really yep. given way to this idea of a river in, of news like Twitter where there's just news well, flowing by. I, I, th you're talking about like a marketplace of actual users. Yeah, sure it has. But that doesn't mean that this model doesn't make sense for some things. Um, I find it to be very valuable. I yeah. would like it to stay. I don't. There'll be a solution because too many of us influencers, and I and I use that word lightly. Influentially. <laughs> uh, use it. Yes. Everybody have, here Have either of you it. used News Blur? That's, that's the one I see everybody talking about today. No. Mm -hmm. News Blur. I haven't tried it. But. One of the problems is a lot of these uh, clients use Reader as their back end. Yeah. Somebody's going to have to provide the back end services for this stuff. Right. I mean, you can get your... Uh, subscriptions down, right now downloaded from Reader as an OPML. Was email in Outlook.com would be okay. Mm -hmm. Not ideal. Apple used to do it in Apple Mail and Safari and I th maybe, yeah. yeah, and they took it out. Because nobody uses it. That, I mean, yeah. statistically, right? Somebody said Dig is going to, the people who bought Dig, yeah. which I think is News, Newsly, mm -hmm. can't remember who it was, but uh, they're going to make one. So that's a yeah. possibility. I think it's an opportunity. I think there's a market opportunity if some smaller company come along and yeah. say, okay. There, there, are, there are solutions like Flipboard that make a lot of sense for consumers, but that's not how I want to see this stuff. I just want the text. It's actually how yeah. I've basically been doing it uh, for a long time now is using Flipboard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not for me. Not for Polly. <laughs> mm -mm. No siree, Bob Height. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? Chat room, any other questions? Any other things you'd like to know? Have you used Connect with Windows 8? This asks Husky Geek. Hmm. Hmm. I, don't, I don't remember. I used when, uh, Connect with Windows. It's a, just a developer product at this point, but I don't, I don't remember if it was Windows 7 or Windows 8. Um, oh, there is, I guess, the... One of the news things that's occurring as we do this is that the Windows Phone 7.8 update is occurring again. Yeah. They've made some kind of a fix to that. So they had uh, paused that update because of problems with live oh, tiles. Oh, that's good. been fixed. Right. So that, that's happening. You should be getting that update now. Well, no, this is Windows <laughs> Phone, uh, Leo. So you won't be getting that update now, but you'll get it eventually. <laughs> well, uh, but I have the new BlackBerry. Uh, uh, will it come for me? Um <laughs> When is I like this one from Web twenty four forty nine? When is VBA coming to Windows RT? <laughs> no, it's uh -huh. no. coming real soon uh -huh. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, Let and, me introduce and, you to my new web based <laughs> friends. No, pe no point in asking questions like why did they kill XNA either? Right, there is no why. Silver they hate light. users. That's yeah. why. Yeah, yeah, it was too lightweight and excellent. Yeah. That's and uh, they want to know if uh, either of you contributed to the Laura Mars Kickstarter project. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> That's bizarre. I didn't. Who, the, who knew the, there were that many Laura uh, Mars fans? It is bizarre. I, for some reason, this is getting a, a big news push. It, this is not the first time a movie has been made with Kickstarter funds. In fact, it was no. a, an amazing Academy story Award in the New York winner. Times a few months ago about a crazy movie with Lindsay Lohan and. Uh, that was actually Kickstarter funds. I'm serious. You got to look this thing up. It's, it's a crazy, crazy sounding movie. Who would give money to Kickstarter to make a movie with Lindsay Lohan? Who wouldn't? <laughs> That's nuts. It's it's so nuts it could work. 
<laughs> it could. It <laughs> might just work. Let's just check in with uh, the Laura Mars Kickstarter project and and see. Let's get the tote board up and see how much we've raised. We're trying to get two million dollars to make a movie. Eight hundred dollars. And we now have forty-five thousand nine hundred thirty-seven backers with a total pledged amount oh. of two point seven six million dollars. We've made our goal, ladies and gentlemen. That is insane. It is. Doing it for the kids. Now, if you, uh, I'm sorry, not Laura this, Mars. You know, Laura Mars was the was the movie with Faye Dunaway. It's Veronica. <laughs> it's the eyes, Ver of Laura Mars. eyes of Laura Mars. <laughs> I confuse right. the Mars girls. Uh, it's Veronica Mars. Veronica Mars. Yeah. Does she have eyes that can see things, or is that not? <laughs> I don't think they're related. Mm. Nah. So I apologize. That was a Freudian slip, wasn't it? I, I, that's the, the, the success of this kind of thing is going to trigger a lot of Kickstarter craziness. I bet. I've stopped yep. giving money to Kickstarter projects because almost uniformly, everything I've received from Kickstarter either has I bought has not come or has come and has been crap. Right. So, um, but I guess what, what, how, how, what could go wrong with a movie? Well, I could tell you what could go wrong with a movie. You could, you I could, could tell you exactly what could go yeah. wrong with a movie. Yeah. I mean, that's not enough to make a movie. So some studio is going to come along. Right. You're not going to get any money from ticket sales. Mm. And I guess if you really wanted to see Now, if this goes, which it did, uh, I'm sure we're going to see a Firefly uh, Kickstarter, right? What other crappy TV shows would you like to bring back? <laughs> wow. Sky's the limit. All righty. Let's take a break. Come back with your pick, tip, <laughs> beer, and product name of the week. X Files. Why am I so negative? Asked Gabzilla. Because life is tough. The world yeah, sucks. <laughs> right. And people are mean, and and I can't help that. So I'm just saying it as it is. They're bastard covered bastards. <laughs> <laughs> and I did like Firefly actually, but I don't. They made a movie. Remember, they did the series, which was great. We have that. They made a movie. Okay. And I think they made a second movie that was actually pretty terrible. I think we're done. I mean, sometimes things are done. Oh, sorry, you're talking about uh, Firefly, Fox. not Veronica was, Mars or Laura Mars. Xbox, uh, X Files. I think we should make a Manimal movie. Somebody says <clears throat> it is Pie Day. Are you having pie, ch gentlemen and lady? A Silver Spoons reunion with Ricky Schroeder. Yikes. See, the ideas just come fast and furious from that chat room. <laughs> <laughs> Moonlighting the later years. <laughs> I want to see uh, Bruce and Sybil do it. What? That's what I... <laughs> okay. All right. Sybil Shepherd, right? Was the woman? Yeah, and she Bruce Willis. appear in the next Die Hard movie. It could be one of those weird little non sequitur things right in the middle. <laughs> and he could say, I feel a strange attraction to you. I right. wonder what it is. And then he just keeps going. Oh, I know. Bruce and Will, Bruce and Sybil and Sam and Diane. We could make a new... Jeez. In the retirement home. <laughs> hey, come here, you cutie. <laughs> it's time for a word from Squarespace. They're wondering why they bought ad time at this very moment. <laughs> Actually, Squarespace. Three's company. I like that idea. Three's company. They say that if we did a movie with Bruce and Sybil, it should be called Died Hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's just awesome. I bet you could raise $2 million on Kickstarter for that. And, the, and the, here's the beauty of it. it. You don't ever have to do it. Make the movie. Just take the money. It's a great deal. You can't lose. You That's just say, funny. okay, we're, we're in development. And then you go to Mexico. Died Hard. Died, D Y E D, died hard. Yeah, good name for an autobiography. <laughs> Moonlit. Uh, this show brought to you by Squarespace.com. A fabulous choice if you want to put together a website. I know Paul wishes, actually, Paul has used it. Uh, Paul's using it for his current uh, book project, which mm -hmm. is called, I never remember the name of this. Windowsphonebook.com. Windowsphonebook.com. Actually, it's really important that you say that with the right cadence. Not Windowsphonebook.com. Yeah, Windowsphonebook.com. Right, right. Right. That's true. Cadence is everything. Um, so, Paul, why'd you choose Squarespace? Maybe because it was easy, beautiful. Because you talk simple. about it so much and you made me mad. I, I sold you on it. <laughs> I sold you on it. Because I was using a terrible CMS at yours, the time. Yeah. Well, they've improved the, the SuperSite CMS, right? Oh, yeah. No, it's, the it's no longer in, written in Delphi. I was in hell for three years, Leo. I know. I know. I remember you. I felt your pain. 
Squarespace is the secret behind exceptional websites like Paul's. Well, he didn't exactly do a beautiful design. And I was going to say, that was a, a, you don't have to. a bit of a, uh, It is a, certainly a website. I think we could give it that but much. But that's the beauty of it. And it never goes down. You never, it's reliable. It's easy to post to. You can use the apps, or they have a great iPad and iPhone app. But here's a new feature, and you might want to be uh, checking this out, Paul. You can sell goods now because they've added <laughs> commerce. So I'm going to sell a book. You could sell digital copies of that book. You could sell print copies of that book. It's, they could do unlimited physical products, unlimited digital products. They'll set you up with a merchant account. They even calculate automatically shipping, tax. You could do coupons. They track inventory. You could have a mobile store. This is amazing. Squarespace.com. Uh, we've talked about it before. It's the best hosting plus the best content management system. Now they've added commerce. And look at this. The price is right. Uh, the basic plan is $8 a month when you buy an annual plan. You can get the unlimited plan for the unheard of $16 a month when, when uh, billed annually. That includes unlimited pages, galleries, blogs, unlimited bandwidth. You could get really popular. It never get a bandwidth bill. Unlimited storage, unlimited contributors. When you buy the annual plan, you get the custom domain name, you know, uh, uh, windowsphonebook.com, for instance. And, uh, and uh, they'll hook it up for you. You want to go a little step further, do some e-commerce? For 24 bucks a month, you get everything in the unlimited plan and unlimited physical and digital products. You could sell CDs or MP3s, e-books or hardcovers. Squarespace Commerce. It's here for $24 a month billed annually. $30 MacGyver. a month. month. It is MacGyver. You, know, you want to remake MacGyver. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just blurting stuff out like an old person. Okay, okay, good. I um, want chocolate. MacGyver, I remember him. <laughs> that was a good show. I love that show. <laughs> Squarespace.com. Here's what you do. You go there right now. You can try it for free. You don't need a credit card. You get two weeks free of everything. But if you decide to buy, make sure you use Windows 3 as the offer code. And, <laughs> and you get 10% off your first purchase with a new account. I think you're going to love it. Squarespace.com. When you, when, can, and they don't take a I cut of the I can see the end coming, anything. Leo. I can see that light at the end of the MacGyver. tunnel. MacGyver! <laughs> Just like the day that Paul torpedoed an ad. Matlock! <laughs> yes. I want Matlock! Quincy. What is Tom Selleck doing these days? He's doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's busy. He's busy. Our uh, tip of the I week, should. make That's Windows true. 8 work the way you want to. How, Paul? Yeah, I mean, we already talked about this on the uh, earlier in the show, but um, uh, through those... Starduck has two, a lot well, of solutions, actually. Starduck, I, yeah. that's that's kind of the big the big yeah. thing. Yeah. The one question I, I actually do get from people that I don't have a good answer for is some people want to bring back the arrow effect uh, to no, the Windows no, desktop. No, And I'm not actually aware of a utility for that, although... Wait, no, I think eight. Starduck has one. I think you can with this, with the, one of the Starduck solutions. Oh, do they really? I okay. swear to God. Chat room will, We're basically chat room will. living in a Starduck lifestyle here is what I'm hearing. But I prefer the Windows 8 look on the desktop. It's personally. a Starduck world. Anyway, I wrote an article about this stuff. Of course you, you did. Because Paul sure. can't see something without saying, I'm going to write an article about that. I'm going to write something about that. <laughs> I'm going to write about MacGyver. <laughs> I'm going to write a Magnum P.I. movie script. <laughs> hey, there's a good idea. Uh, how about your software pick of the... Oh, i got to download it right now. I keep forgetting. Oh, Twitter is here. So, yeah, Twitter for Windows 8. After I paid, what was it, $10 for Tweetro? Or... Yikes. What was it that I you told me to buy? Yeah. Oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Metro Twit. Uh... You told no. me to buy Metro Twit, and I did. Oh, Metro Twit's great. But, but it was ten dollars, and now yeah. I can get the free. Well, is this better? The new Twitter is it free? I it mean, is, is it free. better? It is it's, free. It, it's kind of the quintessential Metro app in that it has all of the good and bad stuff about Metro apps, you know. So, uh, Twitter seems to be in love with like this one column view, whereas a lot of Twitter third-party solutions have multi-column views. Um, but the one nice thing about this app, I have to say, um, it looks a lot like the Windows Phone app, yeah. which I like. It. Really, it works well in snap mode. And so if you want to snap Twitter onto the side, and that's sort of the that's, way I think a lot of key. people... That's key. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely key. Um, it works really well Should like I that. Get, so now, it's a quick app. Is this it? The blue one? <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's got Twitter. a bird. Yeah, it's got a bird. Yeah. Installed. There's something right under it called Twitter Pro, but that's not from Twitter. This is the official Twitter app. Yeah, this is the... It just came out yesterday. Yeah. I'm so excited. It's, a good one. it's nice. Twitter was installed. Oh, this is very exciting. Oh, look, I get the birdie and everything. 
Purdy, Purdy Birdie. Authorize app. It even remembers my login, so I don't need to uh, re-log in. Yeah, it must tie into the Internet Explorer save password thing. Yeah, yeah, cool. And so, and now I can swipe this over to the edge and, uh, whoops. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, Popeye. Where do I swipe? From the left or the right? I would pull it down from the top. Okay. And then down from the top. pull it down from the top and then move it over? And then move it over, yeah. It's you really... got to you you start the pull not on, this, uh, on the screen, not above the screen. Oh, on the screen, but not above near it. The top. Near, right near the top. <laughs> <laughs> you got to... So it's kind so of a it's tap, out. <laughs> it's kind of a tap and hold nothing. There, I got it. Release to refresh. No, that's not what I want. I'm sure I'll figure it out. Go go on with the next. <laughs> I'm dying. Mary Jo's up. So. <laughs> Hi, Mary Jo. He's our problem now, Mary Jo. <laughs> I feel we shouldn't. An operating system shouldn't make you feel. This is the moment when the parents realize <laughs> maybe maybe we don't have a little PhD on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> An operating to, system should not make you feel disabled in some way, like some I, sort of developmental I, issues going on here. That is a beautiful synopsis of Windows 8. <laughs> right there. Yep. I can't figure it out, Paul, but I'm excited about this new Matlock okay. show. Remember that you can also use the mouse to do this. You could use the little mouse cursor, and it turns into a hamburger helper hand, and you can pull it down. And... A hamburger helper hand. It does. <laughs> I promise you it does. No, it's not. Oh, there it is. But it's very, that's a small target. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Yeah, baby. Yay! It worked. <laughs> this is the nice thing about Windows 8. You feel like so such a success when you get it to do it. It's but, the struggle that defines us, Leo. Yeah, the powerful. So now I have this. This is good. This is exactly how it, it, this is exactly how it should be. Yeah, it's nice. I don't know. I don't know what this thing is, but so you, well, you can do anything you want. So hit the start button. And then hit like all uh, start hit button. Open open one note because that's some. hey hey now they're together at last. Two great tastes in one screen. This is you know you could almost do this like have a wind have like different two different windows on the screen and you mm -hmm. could go back. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in version nine, Leo. Oh, I got another idea. I could, I could, well, uh, take data from one screen and put it in the other screen. I, we could call it like I don't know. We could cut it and paste. Olay or yeah. DDE yeah. for you old timers. DDE. I remember that. Win sixteen. It's the future. <laughs> Mary Jo Foley, can you give me an enterprise pick of the week? It's actually aptly named. It's time for a roll-up. Is it a fruit roll-up, Mary Jo? It is not a fruit Matt roll Matt Luck. <laughs> Matt MacGyver! <laughs> Leo MacGyver. <laughs> it it's, is not. It's a new pool game Paul and I have invented. <laughs> we'll, we'll sit in the pool. We won't swim because that's dangerous. You could have a heart attack. And you shout MacGyver, and I'll there shout Matt Luck. There you go. What about it, Paul? Couldn't it be great? <laughs> No. Paul's I'm crying. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> what is what is the, what is this? The Windows Seven Hotfix Roll Up? Yeah, Enterprise Pick of the Week. Woohoo! The Roll Up. His camera is actually Paul's jiggling. Stop. His Paul's camera stop. is actually jiggling. <laughs> Madlock. Madlock. <laughs> if your head's okay. not underwater, Paul, you have to say MacGyver. Okay. I can't, I can't breathe. Now. Go ahead, Mary Jo. I'll just mute his microphone. Mute him. Mute him. <laughs> Madlock. He's underwater. He's, down. Okay. he's just, you know what? He's punchy. He's been in Redmond for two days. That explains. Uh, I'm okay. 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 <laughs> Go ahead, Mary Jo. We've we've composed okay. ourselves. Let's talk about the <laughs> slow boot, slow login hot fix. What? Yeah. So this is a this is a roll up that came out on Patch Tuesday this week. It was kind of a hidden one because it's not a security one. But what it is is it's almost like a service pack, even though they don't want to call it a service pack. It's 90 hot fixes in this one roll up. Whoa. And it's yeah, it's huge. 
uh, meant to improve performance and stability of Windows 7 Service Pack 1 and Windows Server 2008 R2 machines. So they've never done a Service Pack 2. No. For seven. They, or, or and I don't think they are going to. Although so, they've never actually said that. But this but, is like a service pack, too, in a way, right? Is. Yeah. It is. So our, our good friends on the Ask Premier Field Engineering Platforms blog, who are loyal Windows Weekly listeners, alerted me to this hotfix and said, hey, I bet your listeners are going to love this one. And I bet they are, too. So you might want to go get it. Yeah. There's a... Yeah, there's is it a, not automatic? I, I mean, uh, I think it will be pushed to you ultimately. Uh, but I also included uh, in my story about it. I included a download link in case you don't get it and you want it. Excellent. All yes. about Microsoft.com, kids. That's right. Code name of the week. Code name of the week um, is Gemini. A new one for us here on the show. Um, Gemini is a coming update. <laughs> Paul is still crying uh, to Dynamic CRM. Uh, and it, this is kind of interesting. Dynamic CRM team is still doing a whole ton of updates with code names. Don't make me look at him anymore. <laughs> Bad luck! <laughs> I need to not look there, over there. Okay. Chuck and I Sorry. is... The next update to CRM, Microsoft Dynamics CRM, it's uh, Microsoft bought this company called Marketing Pilot last year, which is a marketing automation company. And the Gemini update, according to various people who've posted about this code name, um, which Microsoft still is not officially acknowledging at this point, say that this is how you're going to get the Marketing Pilot uh, functionality, all this uh, marketing automation integration built uh, more tightly connected with your CRM product. Uh, next week is Microsoft Convergence, <laughs> which is the big CRM show. I'm in sorry, Moral. Paul's server is overheating. I, I think we have to. We have somebody better pour a bucket of water on him or something. All right, chat room, everybody, all together, shout Matlock. Ready? One, two, three. Matlock. Uh, I'm really, I'm really sorry. Uh, sorry, Mary Jo. You just don't care about dynamic CRM, Paul. No, we don't. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Did I say that? Oh, my God. I'm sorry. No, you guys care. You're going to care, care next week. You're going to hear I this care. a lot next week when oh, Microsoft has their big show in New Orleans next week all about CRM. You're going to read a lot of CRM news. So I bet I bet next week they're going to announce this. That's just a guess on my part. <laughs> Mary Jo, <Gemini>. I'm sorry. <laughs> this, the show is, is, is off the track. It's the not, show is off. It's, Paul, Paul's like it's in over. tears. <laughs> it's over. Why don't, you, why don't you give us a beer pick of the week? I will. Maybe and we will all feel much better. Okay. So everybody knows St. Patrick's Day is coming up <laughs> yeah. this week. You're not going to pick green beer, please. No, not green beer. And not Guinness either because yeah, that's just too common. So yeah. I, I picked another Irish beer called the Porterhouse Oyster Stout Ooh. from Porterhouse Brewing in Ireland. And you can get this in the U.S. I, I've seen it. I've even had a couple pints here myself in New York. And what's really cool about this beer is it's a stout brewed with oysters. Like they actually throw what? oysters in. Yeah. Oh, and it tastes that's delicious. disgusting. No, that no, sounds it's great. Fantastic. Oysters it's fantastic. like the seafood? Yeah, like the seafood. Um, yeah, they what? put oysters in the boil. And yeah, it gives it this nice, sweet, kind of delicate flavor. So if you're looking for kind of a, a little different, something a little different for St. Patrick's Day and you want to drink an Irish stout, I'd say try to find this porterhouse oyster stout. I mean, it's good for a story. You know they put oysters in this. It's awesome. I could see plunking a oyster in a beer like kind of a chaser thing. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, they brew it with the oyster. Some some people brew Does with oyster not, shells. It doesn't taste they put, fishy? No, it tastes a little salty in a nice way. Oh, well, I, you know, I like oysters. It's not that I don't like oysters. I just never thought of brewing beer with it. <laughs> I bet you'd like this one, Leo. You should look for it. I'm getting it. I'm going to drink it for, for St. Patty's Day. Oops. In fact, Datalore, who's in uh, Ireland, says, next time you're over here, I'll bring you to the porterhouse, Leo. Yep. You can have some beer yourself. You can yes. watch them shuck the oysters, throw them oh, right nice. in there. Yeah. That'd be cool. So uh, what are you going to do for St. Patrick's Day, Mary Jo? Are you uh, at Sunday? I don't know. Tough, tough call there. You have your own, you know, Local, right? I have my you own beer. To. I have my own beer well, here you, as well. You don't even have to go out the door. I don't. Yeah. Um, but you have a local that you go to, a pub, a little place you like I to do. Frequent. My local, yep. 
Rattle and Hum for Rattle anyone who comes to visit named, New York. Named after yeah. the U2. Indeed. Which is Irish, an Irish band. So I would think Rattle and Hum would probably do a pretty good St. Patrick's Day. They do, <laughs> indeed. All right. And Paul, you're 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 uh, you're grounded. <laughs> He's out of here. He's grounded. You're, you're grounded. Sir. I, I have no explanation for what just happened. <laughs> but I am. Oh, sorry. I know what happened. I know what happened. Just a good thing I'm sitting on a ball. That's all I can say. We are. Um, <clears throat> we do this show every uh, Thursday, around about 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time, 1800 UTC on Twit.tv. You can tune in live and join the crowd shouting at Paul. That's fun. We all shouted Matlock. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh boy! <clears throat> but uh, but if you can't watch live on demand, uh, audio and video available after the fact. Twit.tv slash Windows or wherever better podcasts are storehoused and and served up, fresh and delicious. Thanks, Paul. Paul Thorat is it all about? Or, I'm sorry, Paul's at uh, SuperSite for Windows. Win SuperSite.com. He's also the author, and I bought it by the way, Paul, and I have it. Windows mm -hmm. Eight Secrets. I needed it for this. So nice. thank you. Great book. It's funny, it's so thin compared to the uh, earlier tomes. Yeah, it's just because it's all new stuff only. Ah, so fortunately I have Windows we 7 We have washed secrets. our hands of the past. So I can refer back to Windows 7 secrets for stuff, the yep. older stuff. All right, good. Uh, Mary Jo Foley writes it uh, all about Microsoft.com and brews beer, which she does not sell, so don't ask her. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next time on Windows Week. Oh, it's a fun show. I am. Matlock. Oh, boy. I am glad you got got that out of you there. Oh, I don't know what. You can't do that on a plane. There. They won't. They'll take, they'll take you off. Oh, my God. <laughs> they'll, they'll be like, who is this guy? Get him off. You know what's funny, Paul? Is your, your, the, your camera was jiggling because uh, yeah, the yeah, laptop yeah, yeah. was just going. That's <laughs> <laughs> great. I love it. That's great. It was great. <laughs> it was great. I'll be okay. Yeah. <clears throat>